Good afternoon. This is Linda Heimberger with the South Carolina Electronic Resources with DISCUS. And I'm sorry for the delay. I appreciate you all um, hanging in there. We had a few technical problems. Um, I do want to cover our full agenda today. So uh, I will uh, make sure to cover everything promised. If you have any questions and um, or any comments, anything that you need to communicate with me, uh, you can certainly uh, raise your hand. Uh, or you can, uh, if you raise your hand to use the microphone, I'll be glad to turn your microphone on. Or if you just want to send me a question, I'll be sure to share those out with everyone. Um, just to make sure everyone is able to hear me, if you will go to questions and um, type in your first name, uh, that will let me know that you are here and you are able to, um, to see the uh, to see and hear me. So this is what we are uh, covering today. We have um, the agenda of the overview of our DISCUS platform about us, training and contact us primarily. We're going to look at the smart search interface, the Credo reference, automate, Novelist Plus, and uh, I wanted to talk about our certificate of attendance. If any of you are interested in having a copy of the certificate of attendance, um, I will be glad to um, do that for you and personalize it for you for your records. Uh, so please do email me at the email address that is on the screen. Uh, we do have a two for going, so any of you that are attending today, if you would like to um, attend tomorrow as well, and you attend both of the webinars, we are um, uh, doing a drawing for prizes. We have five prizes that are up for grabs, and since there are only about 12 of you, you have some pretty good chances of getting that. We are really trying to increase our, our uh, participation in our webinars, and if you can share out to your colleagues um, about these, um, we would really appreciate that so that we can increase our outreach and try to cover in, uh, questions that you may have as you're out in the field doing the work. We are going to work on a public uh, public library series for the spring and you are also welcome to email me with any specific ideas of webinars that you would like to see covered. Uh, depending on your position at the public library, um, th there are a lot of different angles we can take these webinars as far as broad subjects, um, specific subjects, uh, topics, and we would uh, really love hearing from you. So what we're looking at uh, first here is the overview of the DISCUS platform. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, just do the full screen here so you can see everything. Um, see if I can move along here. For those of you who are completely new to the DISCUS uh, platform. This, these are over 40 databases that are funded by the General Assembly and provided as a service to all of South Carolina from the South Carolina State Library. Our key content types are all different types of resources that you as librarians are very familiar with. Unfortunately, a lot of our users are not uh, familiar with uh, just the variety of types of information we have here. Uh, there are a lot, uh, as you'll see on this list, of primary source documents that are available uh, in the various databases that can be very useful if you're helping any school children out or even at sometimes people are doing advanced research. Uh, we do have our storybooks, chapter books, specialized reference books, and of course our magazines, newspapers, and journals. Um, and those of you in the public library are probably familiar with our master file. That's really the premier database for the public libraries um, as far as magazines go. Uh, 
Uh, we also have tools that help individual needs. If you have a patron who has um, any kind of disability with eyesight or perhaps they need to have their articles read to them, we do have a lot of uh, features within the databases. We have scalable reading levels and font sizes that are available through uh, Britannica uh, Library that uh, we can um, tell you all about. There are language translation tools, transcripts to different audio files. We do have read aloud and listen tools in most across the uh, database platform. We have them in Credo Reference, all of our Gale databases. Um, so this is something that, again, you might want to be uh, aware of for your patrons. Um, we also have practice tests for GED and U.S. citizenship tests along with skill building and computer skills modules that would appeal to your, uh, to your users. I do want to emphasize in this session, we're going to be covering some Credo Reference, Automate, and Novelist Plus. Um, we are not going to be going into details, but we are going to be sharing what is available in those resources. Tomorrow will be our Novelist Plus for public libraries uh, that you won't want to miss. It's going to go into a lot more detail on that resource. Um, I did want to show you, for those that are new to the Discus platform, we do have um, the uh, across the top, our navigation bar. I wanted to point out the About Us section at the scdiscus.org page because this is very useful to you in public libraries, particularly the technical support toolkit uh, is going to be useful to you. And I'm going to kind of pull up a screen to kind of break out what some of those pieces are, and we can look at it live as well. Um, you can see that we have um, um, we're gonna we have widgets that you can use and add to your site. Uh, we have a lot of uh, support materials that it, it's just good for all of your staff to know about. I understand that most of you have your own platform as far as how your patrons access these. Mostly the schools go through scdiscus.org. Uh, so your navigation and search interfaces will be a little different from ours, so we're not really going to go over there, those at this point. Um, but the smart search that we're looking at today, if you also subscribe to additional EBSCO databases as a public library, you can also create your own um, EBSCO discovery piece. Uh, you do not have to use the Smart Search widget for that, but you can create your own to uh, also search across any databases that you've purchased. Um, the training piece, you did go to our training calendar to, to register for this, but I'm going to show you briefly some additional tools within the online archives and the training resources. So if you are needing uh, electronic handouts, those are going to be in our um, training resource section. If you miss a webinar or you want to share it out to another colleague, our online archives has uh, that information as well for you. And then obviously our training calendars, which you want to keep up on to see if there are further uh, trainings that you would like to attend. Finally, and, and certainly very importantly, are the um, contact us information. If you get involved with us and connect by Facebook or by Twitter, you will be getting feeds uh, to be able to uh, find out updates, changes in our, our resources, any new features that are added. For instance, we just added the feature to Culturegrams. Um, it was just added to be able to integrate with Google also. That was one of the new features this week. You can also join the Discus L listserv that will also give you uh, updates and information um, as well. So when I mentioned the Discus Support Toolkit, this is what would be of interest to you here from this site, particularly the linking instructions that are available for uh, colleges and public libraries here. And um, you can also uh, be able to um, look at the search widget boxes that we have. You can add a search widget for 
uh, consumer reports specifically. You can add them for other EBSCO uh, databases. And then finally, particularly to you who are at public libraries, the usage reports section, instructions for public libraries and colleges will be very useful to you from that technical support toolkit on the About Us page. So I'm going to show you a couple. I'm going to move into automate at this point. This is actually going to help you when you are helping any patrons that are looking for information about their cars, about automobiles, uh, everything from um, maintenance guides or maintenance schedules, uh, right down to the wiring diagrams. The automate um, database has a ton of information uh, for various vehicles, both foreign and domestic, um, includes step-by-step -step repair procedures, wiring diagrams, um, and also it gives uh, quarterly content updates. So this is going to be a current um, resource for you to use with your patrons. Um, it can include labor time so that um, a person that is getting work done on their car can kind of see about how long it should take. Um, it also gives different quotes uh, for, for what that labor should cost. Uh, parts, numbers, diagrams, all of this information is available to you to show your patrons and encourage them uh, to use this as a resource as they, um, as they are um, come and ask you for that information. And finally, I wanted to give you this uh, Discus Office support screen so that if any of you want to do a screenshot there, you're welcome to do that. Uh, you can contact us at any time for your support. Our help desk is at the top listed there. Um, for any training that you might want for webinars, screencast, if you want me to come out and do an on-site tr staff training, um, I would be glad and happy to do that. And then any management related types of questions that you want to get feedback to the Discus office, Patricia Sinclair will take those emails uh, for anything that you uh, feel is a needed to be added to the collection or um, you have any comments on existing resources. She would be your contact there. And as I said before, just to be uh, connect with Discus uh, so that you can stay in, in the loop as to what we are, are covering and what we're doing there. So I'm going to get out of the canned sort of uh, piece there so that you can see Let's see if I can get out and back to I'm just going to go into Chrome here so you can see. Again, you all will not be accessing from this platform, uh, but it is important uh, to you because um, all of the technical support toolkit that I mentioned there, the linking instructions will give you any additional logos. If you are wanting to add access to your website, you can do it there. And um, of course, the training section that I mentioned before is there as well. I'm just going to go into uh, Automate here and uh, kind of give you an overview of access and usage. This is something that uh, the, your, your patrons can actually take their iPad out to their car and be able to look at some of these manual guides while they're actually repairing their cars. Um, but you can see here they can select the mate. Uh, the make, the model, the engine type, et cetera, so they can pull up their vehicle. And I'm just going to pull up this uh, here as an example to show you. Once you get, uh, once you um, identify the automobile that you um, that you want, um, you need the information for here. You can. Uh, see on the left how you get the uh, airbags all the way A through Z list so that that is one way that your patrons can easily access the information. They can also search within those there uh, at the top left if they want to run a search on that piece. 
So this is going to be uh, useful from everybody that's trying to change their oil and wants to know what type needs to go in it to people that are actually getting work done on their cars um, and any other type of reference question in between that you might be asked for that as well. So I'm just going to click on one of these so you can see once you are in the drop down, there is a little elevator down for them to be able to select what they want to do with the battery replacement procedures, battery specifications. Some of the information that you will see here uh, will just be a, a quick in, in a quick chart form. And then some of the other information is going to actually provide uh, diagrams here. Uh, for them to be able to pull up and see exactly what they're supposed to do. So not only will they have uh, the, the printable uh, piece of the instructions, but they'll also uh, be able to pull up those diagrams. So if they wanted to run a battery test, it'll um, kind of tell you, walk you through that as well. So this is one uh, uh, that we just got last year that replaced the, the old uh, Automotive Reference Center. Um, as some of you know, that one became very dated. Um, under the electrical piece, this is where they're going to be able to find um, a, a lot more of the uh, wiring types of um, um, information. Let's see if I can go back here. Um, the maintenance schedules are probably the most uh, used piece of the automate software uh, where they can actually see, you know, at 10,000 miles, what should I uh, be having looked at uh, at uh, 100,000 miles, et cetera, what should, uh, what should be serviced or looked at. That's going to give them that chart if they no longer have their little book in their car. And you can also see here, um, they can even look up to see like what the air pressure needs to be in the tires, what the tire size should be. So all of those pieces are found on the left hand side once they indicate which, um, which vehicle they, they are in need of information for. So again, once they pull up the information here, they can look at uh, the what they need and see if I can pull that last piece up. The wiring diagrams here uh, under components and systems, they can then go uh, letter by letter there. So if they are looking for uh, you know a particular fuse or a, something uh, specific there, the fuel injector, uh, washer motors, etc. They can just use that as a quick uh, menu. The other piece that they can do, um, you can see the abbreviations that are given here if they're reading the manuals and they do not know what an abbreviation is for, that is located here. And they can also do um, just a direct search if they want to search within on a specific piece. I, I typed in windshield wipers. Notice the actual term for that is just wipers, but your regular uh, consumer is probably going to think windshield wipers. But you can see that they have um, wiper blades, wiper switch bars, the motor for them, the rear motor, washer pump, etc. So uh, this is going to be under the labor section. They'll have the technical service bulletins that'll tell them anything to do with the, with the wipers as well. And then actual wire, wiring diagrams. This would be for somebody that wants to either uh, repair their car themselves or they want to know exactly what would be needed to repair. Um, so those are all available to them as well. The other thing that's nice about these diagrams is they can be enlarged. So if, if they can't see that tiny print, certainly they can enlarge it um, to be able to see exactly uh, what they need to see there. 
Are there any questions about Automate? Because I'll just pause here a moment. I'll look in my questions section. Okay. So we have Cynthia, we have Catherine and Lawrence um, with us. And looks like we have Sarah and Heather. Um, so if any of you do have questions or if there, if you've had a question this week, perhaps that is a stumper that you wonder, is there any kind of discus resource for this crazy question I had this week? Um, I'll be glad to answer any of those questions that you post for me. I'll share them with everyone. Um, it might be something uh, that we have in discus that maybe you weren't aware of uh, that we can that we can share with you. So I'm pausing just for a moment here to see if there is any. Um, yeah, so please do uh, ask away or make comments as you wish, as I'll be glad to to respond. So the next uh, database that I wanted to cover today is actually our Credo reference database. And if you will click on the raise hand, if any of you have used Credo uh, in your reference work, if you have used Credo, um, So Credo Reference actually has a public core and an academic core. And some of you may have one, uh, you'll have one or the other. They don't let you actually pull from both collections. But uh, depending on your local area, if you're close to a technical college or a college and you have patrons who need more of the academic uh, materials, uh, you might want to have the academic version of that. If you have um, um, if you have patrons that really just need general reference questions or maybe basic kinds of after school questions for students, you're probably going to have the public core. Um, and some of you may not have access at all. So if that's you and you are interested in this database, you would want to contact Patricia uh, if you have a question about that. Um, this is a wonderful database for both, uh, actually throughout South Carolina, everybody from career specialists, public librarians, patrons, uh, school students, college students use this database. There are over 600 reference materials that are in this collection. So this can really extend your collection, particularly if you are um, particularly if you are um, having to weed a lot of your reference books and you really don't have the budget to get more, this is a great place to start. There are the explore topic pages here that are broken out by um, subject that you can look at and, and introduce your, student, uh, your um, patrons to. There's also several ways this can be searched, and you'll notice at the top, the default is for the basic search, uh, which is going to do a keyword search, and then it's going to pull up information from each of these, the images, the titles, and the mind map, uh, all at once. You can also go directly into the mind map. So if you have someone who is uh, searching on a new concept, they're not really familiar with a particular topic that they're asking you about, um, then uh, you might um, just start here to kind of give them a little bit of background information and break out a larger topic. So um, I'm just going to. Uh, go in and type in the periodic uh, table here to show you one example of using the mind map search. Um, it will actually break out information about the periodic table. Notice on your right, from all the reference books, it goes through and provides uh, reference entries for the different books. Everything from uh, Penguin Dictionary of Science, 
chemistry, science dictionaries. So you can see they're going to be at different levels. Um, so if you have a college student, obviously you would want something a little more advanced than a younger student um, or just a patron who is interested in knowing about uh, the different elements in the periodic table. You can click on any of those resources on the right and it's going to then pull up from the book. This is facts at your fingertips introducing chemistry. And you're going to get any of the graphic information um, and the text that would be found in the reference work. And you'll notice at the top, these are some of the ways your patrons can use these. Again, as before, I mentioned the listen to this page. This is the read aloud part uh, in Credo. So that's something that can be very useful to your pa patrons there. Also, um, if there are any school students, there are citation information for school students. And then any of your patrons who have a, a Google account can actually export this document to their Google Drive. So if you are helping them and they want to be able to refer to it when they get home or to work, um, they can simply go to export to Google Drive here. And if they haven't already signed in, they would need to sign in and then it will send it directly to their drive. They can also email it to themselves if that's a preference of your patron. And then there is there are translation tools available here as well. So uh, these are all uh, the Google translators. So some of it is not going to be precise because it is um, done by algorithms and not people. But um, that would be something that would be an option if someone needed to see this um, or read this article, say, in Spanish. Um, that is a feature that, uh, that can be used uh, for your patrons as well. So the, the other nice piece of the mind map tool that is here, um, it's certainly good if any of you have after school children coming in and, you know, saying they need to write on a particular topic, but they don't really know where to begin. Um, if they have a big topic like imperialism or something that they really need to be able to break down and wrap their hand or wrap their head around different parts, that is there. So within that periodic table, every time you click on another concept, such as atomic number, it's going to then break down those concepts within that aspect of your topic. And notice on the right, you now have results that go with atomic number. And you can continue to break down uh, the elements, the different types of atoms here, et cetera, et cetera, um, so that so that all of that connected information um, is called out along with the resources on the side. If any of you do public service uh, presentations and you want to perhaps use uh, one of these concept maps in your presentation, you can also click this blue arrow in the middle and kind of move the resources away so that uh, they're not um, kind of blocking your visibility and you can also turn them back on as well. Another feature that you all might be interested in within Credo Reference is um, being able to create a virtual reference shelf. So if I wanted uh, to do that, if I wanted to link a virtual reference shelf uh, maybe to my website, I could do, uh, I could search on the topic there and what you really want to do here is, um, let's see if I can get back to browse titles here. If you do browse titles instead of search titles, it's going to bring up a list of all the books within this um, resource. Let's see if I can get 
that to work that are uh, have music in the title. Let's see if I can get this to go here. So you can see there are seven books that include the word music somewhere in the title. And what you can do with that is actually, um, let's see if I can go back. Um, once you have the list here, you can click on the permalink that you see in the top when you browse, and it will actually give you the code to be able to add that. Uh, if you have webliographies that you're sharing out, um, anything electronic uh, that you're providing or links to your uh, from your website, you can actually save the permalink and just say music bookshelf. Um, or if you want to pull out only those that are uh, relevant to careers or jobs, you can do that as well. And it just makes it a very quick way for your patrons to access any of those reference books that are um, that are on the topic of interest to you. I'm just checking here to see if there's any questions or any uh, comments that anybody has here. Um, and I do not see anything, but please do uh, stop me, ask any questions that you uh, that you might have. So we're going to look next um, at some sort of collections within collections um, that are part of the credo piece as well. So I'm just trying to get this, see if I can get trying to move this uh, go to webinar piece out of my way here so you can see along the left notice how we have all of these different subjects that are broken out um, you can also look at the collections that are within this database so we have collections here that are, are very useful for young and old alike uh, the DKI witness collection again is found in public core those of you that working with young uh, children young adults all the way through middle school actually will be familiar with the DKI witness books um, and you can see from my search on music that there are two DKI witness books there I can continue to search uh, within that collection so if uh, anybody is wanting um, to see if there's a book on the ancient Greeks within that title collection, um, I'll just do whoops, Greeks. I'm waiting here. Um, there's a little delay in the in the search here. It's like we're searching all the collections. That's probably what's taking so long. I'm just going to go back um, to DKI Witness. There are over 60 titles in the DKI Witness series, and those of, those of you that do work with um, younger uh, patrons, you'll be familiar with these very robustly illustrated uh, books, uh, the ones that check out and hardly ever come back in, in print. I'm just going to go back and see if I can, uh, I'm just going to clear out and go back to the main Credo screen here. We actually have a link if you want to, uh, to be able to break out this collection, you can do that as well. But I'm just going to type in eyewitness for you to see uh, what we have here. When you do the uh, general eyewitness search, notice we get all kinds of different keywords eyewitness. So at that point, you can either search within the collection here to just get the eyewitness books, or you can do eyewitness in title and also find them there as well. Uh, so you will see 
these are going to be all the individual results within those books. Once a, uh, a patron is in one of these books, they would have the opportunity to either search within the book to find something specific they're looking for, or they can use the header, the actual table of contents to browse it. So if I'm looking at the cowboy book here, I can browse the headings uh, to find my information within it. <coughs> So if I'm looking at cowboy branding here, I can go directly to those pages just with the header that that is uh, there. I can also search within the book. So if I am just looking at different types of horses and I want to search within that book, the cowboy book on that, then I can search on horses and now see all the different references uh, to horses, horsemen, etc., that are there. So I could uh, click on that and I'll be led to that page. So again, the citation stuff does become important when you are talking about these kinds of resources because usually you are helping a student. But that collection is going to uh, be something that uh, could be of use to you there. So that is Credo Reference, and the next one that you will see uh, that we're going to pull up on the screen is Novelist, and Novelist Plus is actually uh, primarily for the public libraries uh, because within Novelist Plus, you're going to get book reviews, you're going to get um, information and summaries of books that you can use either for, for collection development or if you have someone who is uh, is interested in a particular book or series, you can help guide those patrons using Novelist Plus. So we have uh, for fans of over here on the left. Um, these are just some very general ones that are more common for fans of Gilmore Girls, uh, for, for fans of Outlander series, um, certainly for fans of Harry Potter. That's going to be a little quick reference for you to be able to see what other uh, types of books that have been published that meet some of the same criteria as far as the um, elements of interest within the books. So you can see the recommended reads that are available here um, for those that are fans of examples of, of uh, Harry Potter there. You can also look across the top to be able to see for Reader's Advisory, there's uh, usually they have different blogs and pieces of information that can help you uh, just as work with Reader's Advisory. So uh, you can look here. Again, what I've clicked on is especially for and then Reader's Advisory. You can look here to be able to get strategies for locating the information, looking at different genres for teens, older kids, adult nonfiction, et cetera. And also, if you are starting a book club, or perhaps you have a patron who wants to start one, or maybe you already have an existing book club, uh, these are uh, good resources for you to be able to share out with your patrons as well um, that, are, that are already there for you. Notice you can do a keyword search, title, author, or series search. Uh, to be able to pull up books. I'm going to go back out to their main screen again for you to also be able to see there are uh, fiction and nonfiction books, some of the best of books that are here, nonfiction A to Z. So you can look at some of those. And when you click on fiction, you can actually break it down by age level. So you have the teen list, the, uh, the tween list, and ages 0 to 8 list. So you'll also be able to find um, some of the best books for each of those age groups. Best Younger Kids Fiction is here. And you can see once you open up one of the books, like Hello Lighthouse, it's going to give you a good review 
uh, more about the book. Um, it'll also give you here at the top, you'll also have that Lexile level if that's important to you and helping your patrons. And you can also do the list and uh, articles here to be able to uh, see where else it is referenced or linked to uh, within the database. So that's good for not only selection, but also looking for titles, uh, identifying titles that would be useful for your patrons that um, you could then see if you have them in your catalog. Notice under the Browse by Appeal piece here, again, you can break out by genre, appeal types, award winners, and even audiobooks have reviews here um, that you don't find in our Novelist Plus K through 8 that is for the schools. So this one uh, that's for the public libraries is going to be a little more broad and far sweeping so that will cover some of your patrons' needs as well. So you can really get a lot of mileage out of these uh, recommended reads lists that you see on the right also. And if we go to the advanced search, which you see here, this one, and you are going to get a lot more detail on this uh, database tomorrow uh, if you attend at 2 o'clock, but you can see you can get into very specific detail about books. So if there is a book that someone read several years ago and they are trying to remember it, they can't remember the title, but they do remember some key facts about it here, uh, whether it was fiction, nonfiction, adult. Um, also, if they uh, if it had a particular uh, gender, uh, and they know it was written by a woman, etc., you can kind of get a lot more uh, specifics uh, as you as you use some of these um, limiters within your search. So uh, we'll just search here. Notice you can also select a field. If you know there's a particular word in the title, you can look for that as well. So you can search with keyword and title, um, appeal factors, um, or themes that you don't really get whenever you're just doing the general search that's given to you as a default at the beginning of this of the of the software finally i want to point out the quick links and she's going to go over this tomorrow uh, that's going to be uh, even more specific uh, but the books to movies here um, if people uh, really liked a movie that they saw, but they want to go back and read the book, uh, or perhaps they just want to know what books have been made into movies, this is a great list uh, for them here that, um, that would be good recommended reads for them. And then finally, the how do I will also give uh, you, you and your users some help when they're looking for books by Lexile, they're, trying to, they're having trouble printing or saving something. Um, and if they just want a general overview of how to use Novelist, they also have that information for them as well. So those are the three key uh, databases that I wanted to at least give you all an overview of to kind of whet your appetite because next year we're going to be going into a lot more detail and showing you how you can incorporate these into different programs, uh, working with different levels of patrons, um, and also how you might incorporate them just in your daily reference desk type of, of, of work that you do. Um, but these are just three of the key databases that are uh, used heavily in public libraries. And um, let's see, I wanted to also tell you one more time, I mentioned early at the beginning of this session that you are able to uh, receive a certificate of attendance today 
if you wish to do that, uh, you can email me. Um, also, we'll be checking tomorrow if, if some of you do register and attend tomorrow. Uh, we will work through the uh, giveaway for the prizes that are there. And as I mentioned before, if any of you want to contact us, um, you can either contact uh, myself or the Discus office uh, just to let us know um, of any kind of particular training you're interested in. Um, you can certainly contact me again if you're wanting um, me to come out on site because what I can do is actually a workshop that is interactive where I come out I went out to Kershaw earlier this year for example I can come out with actual activities for your staff to do scenarios about how they might help reference uh, with reference questions and, and patrons um, quizzes about what databases they might use for different things so we can kind of mix it up and make it interactive um, we can do that again as I said before on any topic if there's uh, you know a, a topic Topic in your geographic location that uh, that's come up and you are wanting to know what discus databases uh, can support that we will be glad to come out and do that as well so I think that pretty much wraps up uh, our session today um, I am checking questions one more time. Does Credo provide access to primary sources? Uh, Heather has this question here. Um, yes, uh, Heather, uh, it, it does. Uh, there are primary sources that are available in uh, Britannica for the younger ones, Britannica, and through high school. Um, there are also primary sources within uh, Credo Reference. I'm just going to pull up our discus uh, list here to kind of show you some that are that are available there. Um, there are some primary sources uh, within Learn 360. Some of those are going to be um, like videos or um, uh, speeches of presidents and those kinds of things. Um, you can also find in the newspapers. Um, one of a really great source for um, primary sources is in the, um, I'm just going to pull down here, is in our newspaper uh, piece that we have. Um, within that, let's see if this is, um, well, I think I clicked on the wrong one. It's historic American newspapers. These go back um, a good while, a good while back. That are some of the uh, most common. Um, you can actually pull up newspapers from South Carolina, um, and those um, those are going to be a lot of good primary uh, documents there as well. Um, but if you go into, uh, let's just say, Britannica High School here, and you do a search, and we can just do a search here, you can see I searched on Kennedy, and you can see the primary source link is here, and you can see various uh, documents, um, John F. Kennedy Soviet missiles, inaugural address, etc. that's available there. Um, you can also pull up some primary sources in the Gale databases, which um, you would find in Biography in Context. Um, I'm actually going to develop uh, a sheet that's going to be a quick cheat sheet for you all to be able to see the primary sources. And I want to show you where I'll be uh, posting those under training and resources. Uh, we already have some scavenger hunts and database searching tips, but we have these subject and topical guides that you are welcome to print out and share to your patrons that's going to break out a little bit about what is in each database. I'm going to be creating a primary source document much like this uh, and posting it to this site. So that will be of help to you as well. Thank you for your question, Heather.
And if there aren't any other questions, then that will wrap it up. But I will stay online. Um, actually, um, see if I can get. Yeah, I'll go ahead and stop the recording, but I will be glad to stay here a few minutes if any of you have additional questions. Great, thank you, Sarah and Heather, uh, and I hope to see you in future webinars. Jennifer, um, great, I'm glad that this was useful to you. Again, this was a, just a quick summary. We are gonna be going into a lot more detail in the new year. Um, is there a way we can view this webinar recording again? Yes, Heather, thank you for your question. Um, you would go to training on our website here and just choose the online archives. And you're going to find those that we've done earlier this year, new to Discus, South Carolina History Resources, and those that our vendors have provided. Um, you will find this and other uh, videos that we do under the general Discus section on that, on that piece. Great. Well, thank you all for coming, uh, and uh, I hope to see you uh, often in the new year. And if there is anything we can do, uh, please contact us. Um, again, I will put our contact information up on the screen uh, once again for you, just so that uh, if any of you need to contact us, you'll have it there handy. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.